noted historical figures exposed deplorable Jesuit secrets. The recent election of Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio to the position of Pope Francis I was an unprecedented event the world has never before witnessed. It is the first time in history that a member of the Jesuit order has been elected to the highest position of the Roman Catholic Church. Reactions worldwide varied from jubilation, to matter-of-fact acceptance, to disinterest. These very reactions revealed appalling ignorance of the true nature of the Jesuit order. Widely regarded as a benevolent missionary order, known for its educational institutions, the Jesuit order as the Society of Jesus is commonly known, has long played an incredibly influential, albeit secretive, role in the destinies of nations, organizations, and individuals. Rulers, presidents, scholars and even Catholics themselves who are aware of the evil perpetrated by this powerful, far-reaching order, have left on record grave warnings that all should heed. Following is a compilation of quotes from a variety of sources. Some admit that their own diabolical organizations were modeled on Jesuit principles. Others give warning. The number of those who sought to warn did so at the cost of their lives. We would encourage all to carefully study the following material. Quote, the wise man will hear, and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Proverbs 1.5, King James Version. Ignatius of Loyola 1491-1556, founder of the Society of Jesus, and first superior general, quote, nor will it contribute a little to our advantage, if, with caution and secrecy, we foment and heighten the animosities that arise among princes and great men, even to such a degree that they may weaken each other. But if there appear any likelihood of reconciliation, then as soon as possible let us endeavor to be the mediators, lest others prevent us. Finally, let all with such artfulness gain the ascendant over princes, noblemen, and the magistrates of every place, that they may be ready at our beck, even to sacrifice their nearest relations and most intimate friends, when we say it is for our interest and advantage. Let proper methods be used to get knowledge of the animosities that arise among great men, that we may have a finger in reconciling their differences, for by this means we shall gradually become acquainted with their friends and secret affairs, and of necessity engage one of the parties in our interests. Immediately upon the death of any person of post, let them take timely care to get some friend of our society preferred in his room but this must be cloaked with such cunning and management as to avoid giving the least suspicion of our intending to usurp the prince's authority. Putting aside all private judgment we should always be ready to accept this principle, I will believe that the white I see is black, if the hierarchical church so defines it. Princes and persons of distinction everywhere must, by all means, be so managed that we may have their ears, and that will easily secure their hearts by which way of proceeding, all persons will become our creatures, and no one will dare to give the society the least disquiet or opposition. Finally, the society must endeavor to effect this at least, that having gotten the favor and authority of princes, those who do not love them at least fear them. Another figure from our history is, Paolo Sarpi 1552-1623, the Venetian Patriot scholar, scientist and church reformer. Quote, they are a public plague, and the plague of the world. From the Jesuit colleges there never is sent a pupil obedient to his father, devoted to his country, loyal to his prince. Every species of vice finds its patronage in them. There is no perjury, nor sacrilege, nor parricide, nor incest, nor rapine, nor fraud nor treason which cannot be masked as meritorious beneath the mantle of their dispensation. Let's look at more quotes from our history. Muccio Vitaleschi 1562-1645, Sixth Superior General of the Society of Jesus. Quote, when sovereigns require a Jesuit's opinion on any subject, the Jesuit in question is to report the matter to his superior, who is to lay it before several Jesuits for discussion. 
The resolution formed after this consultation is supplied to the Jesuit who has been consulted by the Sutheran. Priest Antoine Arnaud 1612-1694 Quote, Do you wish to excite troubles, to provoke revolution, to produce the total ruin of your country? Call in the Jesuits, and build magnificent colleges for these hot-headed religionists, suffered those audacious priests, in their dictatorial and dogmatic tone, to decide on affairs of state. Michelangelo Tamburini 1648-1730, 14th Superior General of the Society of Jesus. Quote, See, sir, from this chamber I govern not only to Paris, but to China, not only to China, but to all the world, without anyone to know how I do it. Pope Clement XIV 1705 to 1774. Following the R. Pope Clement XIV's words, upon signing the Bull of Suppression and Extinction of the Jesuits the Bull is the strongest legal document a Pope can issue. The suppression is accomplished, I do not repent of it, having only resolved on it after examining and weighing everything and because I thought it necessary for the Church. If it were not done, I would do it now. But this suppression will be my death." Pope Clement XIV knew the Jesuits very well, and expected to die at their hands. He was correct. He was poisoned. The peasant woman was persuaded, by means of a disguise, to procure entrance into the Vatican, and offer to the Pope a fig in which poison was concealed. Clement XIV was exceedingly fond of this fruit, and ate it without hesitation. The same day the first symptoms of severe illness were observed, and to these, rapidly succeeded violent inflammation of the bowels. He soon became convinced that he was poisoned, and remarked, Alas! I knew they would poison me, but I did not expect to die in so slow and cruel a manner. His terrible sufferings continued for several months, when he died, the poor victim, said Gormanin, of the execrable Jesuits to which the Bishop of Pistoia, Scipio di Ricci, the nephew and heir of Jesuit General Ricci, fully agreed. As you can see the Jesuits are not at all what they appear to be. You have been warned please take heed and wake up to the truth of your world. Thank you. Op momentous.